is narrated by Abu Huraira radiyallahu anh. And we'll find in this chapter a uh, couple of hadith narrated by the same companion radiyallahu anh. So it is the 10th hadith in the series of Al-Adab Al-Mufrad, the prophetic morals and etiquettes. And it is narrated by Abu Huraira. An Abi Huraira radiyallahu anh. عن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال لا يجزي ولد والده إلا أن يجده مملوكا فيشتريه فيعتقه الله The Messenger of Allah peace be upon him said in the sound hadith which is narrated by Abu Huraira may Allah be pleased with him that a child can never repay his father or her father unless he finds him as a slave and then he buys him and sets him free. So, Anabiyu sallallahu alayhi wasallam in the previous ahadith, when he was asked, who have more rights upon me? He said, your mother. Then whom? Your mother. Then whom? He said, your mother. Man ahaqqu nasi bi husni sahabati. Whom shall I treat best most? Your mother. Your mother. Your mother. Then in the fourth, your father. So it was like in the mind of some of the audience that, oh, the mother is superior to the father. You will find also some ahadith keeping the balance. And we stated, as I was explaining in the previous hadith about the mother, because when the parents grow old, the father somehow was working, have some saving, have some retirement, can support himself. But in the case of the mother, she's much more vulnerable. So look after her, take care of your mother. She needs a lot of help. She needs a lot of support, especially when the father dies and you're the one who's looking after her and you're married. And there is some sort of natural competition. The wife says, everything, your mother, your mother, your mother. Okay? So he's, he's stuck in between. So the Nabi Wasallam says, to be saved, your mother. To be successful, your mother. To enter Jannah, your mother. To frequently mine. In this hadith, the Prophet Wasallam said, what about the father? What about this man who's been working day and night, working hard, bearing all the challenges, responsibilities, hardship, taking all the heat, all the pressure, you know, sometimes agreeing and accepting humiliations from his boss, from his employer, from his company, not to lose his job because of the child. When one of us is single, you find yourself more courageous, brave. You speak with uh, some sort of aggressiveness with your employer, you know. So what if I lose my job? I'll find another one. I can survive a month, two, a year or two. As for me, a falafel sandwich will take care of it for a whole day. But you know what the Prophet ﷺ said in the hadith? الْوَلَدُ مَجْبَنَةٌ مَبْخَلَةٌ مَحْزَنَةٌ To whom? mainly to the father. What does it mean, Ya Sheikh? What does it mean that al-walad, the child, majbanatun, majbanatun, which means makes the father somehow sort of fearful, coward, reluctant to make decisions because he knows that he has a responsibility he has a family, he has children. So he does not make the same decisions that he used to do in the past with the same courage. No, he thinks several times. Why? Because he has children. He has a package. He has a family. Majbanatun. Mabkhalatun. Before marriage, when you're uh, told about the virtues of giving in charity, so you, you find somebody is giving away all his money. You know, the other day when my, one of my children said, you know, I want to donate that much to uh, uh, the, the, uh, the victims of the earthquake. I was so proud of them. And I was asking myself, 
would a person who's married with kids have the same courage, the same generosity? Would any person be willing to donate all his saving if he's married, if he have children? Mm, I doubt. Why? Because even if you get carried away and if you get motivated, then you will think about it at the time of making the payment. Oh my God. So, but the children, the school, the tuitions, the wife, the hospital bills, the rent. So there will be many hindrances. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala called it aqaba. Falaqataha aqaba. An obstacle. Mahzana. Al waladu majbanatun mabkhalatun mahzana. A cause of grief. Even when the child grows up and the child now is married and have a job, if anything happens to him, if he's affected, the father is affected. The parents in general. If he has an issue with his wife, the parents are upset. Uh, if he lost his job, the parents could not sleep and they get up and they pray at night and they ask Allah to give him, uh, you know, support, financial support, help, etc. He got married and unfortunately they're not able to have children. They're more worried about him than he himself worried about himself. So imagine once the person receives a child, we're talking about ordinary human beings, then particularly Muslims, who realize the fact that the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, every one of you is a guardian and he will be asked by the Almighty Allah about everyone who's under his guardianship. Every one of you is a guardian and he will be questioned about his responsibilities towards those who are under his guardianship. And he knows that the messenger of Allah indeed said that it is an enough sin for a person to waste those who are under his guardianship. So he has to shoulder his responsibility. Uh, among Muslims, practicing Muslims, there is no hit or run. Like, you know, every weekend he goes here and there and he sleeps with different women and women sleep with different men. And if there is a child, then abortion, they abort the child and that's it. No, it's a responsibility. That's why marriage is such a sacred thing in Islam. It's called Mithaqan Ghalidha. It is the most sacred contract ever. Big responsibility. So once a person decides to get married, his responsibilities will increase, not double or triple, it will be beyond limit. While when a woman is under the guardianship of her father, he is the one who's providing for the family, you know, in most cases. And now she's worried, is she gonna sit in her father's house forever? She's hoping that a man who will be a good person, a good life mate, responsible, uh, can take care of her and children and household would come and marry her and when this man is found and she prays istikhara and she's happy she starts experiencing rest peace of mind why she passed a big obstacle and the man has achieved now or has entered into a big responsibility to bear that's why Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says here, no matter what you do in order to compensate your father, no way that you can repay him. Unless if the father was a slave and the son happened to be freed, how would the father be a slave and the son would be freed? There are different scenarios. So through Al-Mukatabha for instance. So if there were slavery, and slavery is not available anymore. But according to the Athar, it will actually return towards the hereafter. An actual slavery. The, nowadays, there is human trafficking which is worse than slavery. But even in the West, but we're talking about towards the end of time, there will be actual slavery. So in this scenario, the child, managed to free himself through working hard, making some payments through al mukataba and he's free and he prospered, he made wealth, he made a company, and the father is still into slavery. So if the son managed to pay to the father's master in order to free his father, now we can say, thank you, you paid him enough. But up until this uh, level, you will never repay him enough. You carry him in tawaf, you carry him in sa'i, 
you bring him all your salary, you give him 50% of your income, you build a house for him. All of that is appreciated. This is a great deal. But did I repay him? No, you haven't yet. Did I repay my mother? No, you haven't yet. All of that is to be interpreted into the following fact. No matter what you do to your parents is not enough. Keep doing what is good. And the good news is whatever good you do, number one, you will be rewarded for. Number two, their pleasure leads to the pleasure of Allah, leads to Jannah. Number three, you will be treated the same by your own children. Beautiful. Beautiful privileges.